Slaughter, ladies. Well, hello, honeys. How's everybody doing? How's everybody holding up? Are we all still not thriving? I started a series on my channel a while ago, and it was quite a long standing series called The Entire History of. And I've been wanting to bring it back quite a lot because, at the base of it, at the root of it, I am a hurfler. I love lore. That's what made The Sims 2 so great for me. Yes, there was a lot of little gameplay dynamics, but also just generally the overarching storyline throughout The Sims. Amazing. And I think it's something that was massively overlooked in The Sims 4 because not all of us are creative. Some of us need a little bit of a push. It's very am some of us. Today we're going to be doing the entire history of Nervous Subject which has been requested a lot and I kind of haven't ever really got around to doing that many of the Strange Town families but today I'm bringing it back and I'm thinking about bringing this series back as a whole. Before I start this let me just preface this by saying the Sims games are actually on a timeline so the timeline doesn't just go one two three four it actually goes the Sims 3 first then the Sims 1 and then we move on to the Sims 2. That's why Belagoth is a child in the Sims 3 and then she's an adult in the Sims 1 and then she's missing in the Sims 2 so it goes like that. The Sims 4 is on an alternate timeline so the Sims team have said and I just told me it says step your game or don't be shy put some more. Now that we've got the timeline established we're going to start talking about the actual star of the show Nervous Subject. Now Nervous Subject is probably the most famous in The Sims 2. He does feature in The Sims 3 and he features in The Sims 2 PSP but his story is most known in The Sims 2. And we do first meet him in The Sims 3 in the town Midnight Hollow. Midnight Hollow is a town where it's basically emo. If you had that misunderstood phase even though you were very loved by your parents Midnight Hollow is the perfect place for you and I'm not calling anybody out I'm calling myself out with that statement. So what do we have here my lovelies? We have the Spectre family thanking you. Oliver's had a share of death in her life with every romantic relationship she had ending in a sudden and untimely death. I was gonna say a bitch me too the fuck but that is just not true. Furious at death she decided to track him down and give him a piece of her mind. What she didn't expect was to start a relationship with him. That ended quickly but she was left with something to remember him by. Now it's just her and a young son who was quite the nervous subject indeed. I love that foreshadowing loves. Although why you'd call your kid nervous subject? Like at that point, this is deviating away from the storyline, right? But at the hospital, when she popped that out for womb and they went, oh, what are you going to call him? When she said, ah, probably nervous subject. At that point, I'd get some form of social services involved, you know what I mean? Anyway, moving on. So this is the little baby in The Sims 3. Look at him. Oh, God bless his soul. He does not know what is to come. Who's going to tell him? <laughs> oh, he can walk. He can walk all the way to the Beaker household, honey. This is where Nervous lives in The Sims 3. And when we move on to The Sims 2, you'll see that it's quite a drastic change even in the sims 3 even as a burn he's neurotic you can't quite get a grip on life it takes a while for him to de-stress i mean i'm not saying he's the perfect candidate to be a nervous subject but like olive is kind of setting him up on that path so also in his family tree he doesn't explicitly state that the grim reaper is his father you might also know the specter family from the sims 2 strange town and olive specter is actually his mom but the specter family is in and of itself an entirely different entire history of i couldn't start talking about them in depth without going into the full storyline and i think that's just best saved for another video because jesus christ the last could have a 10 part docu series about her. the amount of cheese murdered and then we move from the sims 3 forward in the timeline to the sims 2 and again a lot of this story is again olive specters so i'm not going to go too in depth with her storyline to the sims 2 drama is a whole nother kettle of fish honey let me tell thee the drama of bob and eliza pancakes reads like a 13 year old's diary entry content the stuff that happens in this entire history of so the last time that we saw nervous he was a toddler and he lived in midnight hollow with his mom olive specter but now he is a fully fledged adult my lovelies so the sims 2 proves that the sims 3 theories about nervous subject being the son of the grim reaper are true because if you go through olive's memories then you can see that she's got memories of wahooing with the grim reaper and then magically she's got a son but also the son doesn't look anything like her and the son is actually the son being nervous subject is actually just an exact clone of the grim reaper just without the dress because grim is a little bit dramatic like that this is where things kind of get dark so we know that nervous and olive lived together and they were mother and son but olive also really neglected nervous during his childhood which ended up in him being taken away by the social worker you'd think that this would be the start of something new not to quote high school musical or anything like that but it was not honestly this is just the start of his bad experiences throughout his life and i know that he's only pixels but still I'm like that not right. So at some point between Nervous being taken away from Olive because of neglect, at some point between then and his adult life, he ended up moving in with the Beaker family. So Nervous's hobbies as an adult include twitching and blinking, which makes a lot of sense once we dive deeper into what he actually goes through at the Beaker family. So this is where the Beaker family live in Strange Town. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere, right next to this alien landing site, which is a little bit odd, but they are science freaks and I'm not one to judge them. It just could never be me, my lovelies. And the bio states, what experiments are the highly secretive and less enabling 
Loki and Cersei Beaker perform an unpure nervous subject. Will this secrecy affect Cersei's career ambitions? The house in itself is a... Uh, it's an aesthetic choice at, at the very least, my love. It's like, and that's me being kind on the issue. It is an aesthetic choice. Now, don't get me wrong. It is some grand design shit. And I don't think that this would be that odd in England. But we are not in Kansas anymore, Henny. We are in Strange Town where this kind of medieval looking fortress is a little bit questionable. I'm not one to judge, but I just can't help it. The inside is also just like a castle. And from here, you'd be like, oh, well, it's a bedroom for another subject and a bedroom for Loki and slash or Cersei, which seems pretty normal. We've got a pretty normal kitchen, a lot of foliage in this place. Quite cozy if you just ignore the giant gaping hole in the middle of the place, which is another subject's bedroom. Then right outside of his bedroom, we've got all of these science experiments, which don't look like they pass a single health and safety test. Upstairs is as cozy as a haunted castle could be, but obviously something's not quite right, my lovelies. We can't really delve in deeper to his storyline without going in for a little backstory on the Beaker family. I might butcher some names here, but just remember that I'm just from a small town in New York. So I'm not that well versed with uh, pronunciation of things because I come from a town where you don't tend to leave your town. Anyway, so just for a little backstory, Loki is a level six in the scientist career and is also enemies with the Curious family. And his bio says that as soon as he perfects his latest invention, Loki is sure to get the recognition he knows he deserves. In the meantime, he keeps himself busy trying to assemble a nuclear reactor out of common household items. Loki's quite narcissistic in himself. Like he makes these inventions. For him, it's the fact that he's making an invention, but also the recognition that comes from making an invention. Cersei is level four in the medicine career, and her bio states that Cersei knows 238 different ways to make someone scream, and none of them are nice. She enjoys taxidermy and collecting coat hangers. You're a very nasty nah, girl. So Loki is kind of painted as a narcissist and a mad inventor kind of thing. Cersei is painted as someone who's evil. Honestly, like that's the only word I can use to describe her. So she's mainly interested about making people scream. That along with taxidermy and collecting coat hangers, that doesn't hint towards great things. That hints towards like, I wouldn't want to be left alone in a room with her for 24 hours, at least not without a weapon, do you know what I mean? And they're both extremely neat, serious and mean. So all in all, these are just ticking time bombs that have already exploded considering what happens. They both have a strained relationship with the Curious family because Cersei had a brief fling with Vidkund and Vidkund actually still pines over her when you're playing the game, but she's rejected him. She's got married to Loki instead. But Pascal, the little devilish demon, and he is thoroughly breaking the bro code has also made advances on Cersei which she has also rejected and that kind of love more of a love square than a triangle but that has created tension between the Beaker and the Curious family therefore Loki and Cersei hate the Curious family so there is a little bit of trouble in paradise although not technically paradise a little bit of trouble in murder town so you might be thinking like yeah but where does Nervous fit in with all of this like they adopted a kid how does he play into their evil lifestyle has anyone checked on him who was running the social service is in this town and maybe just maybe social services might have failed this child i am sorry to this man so nervous subject with a name like that he's got to have some kind of backstory and i'm really sad to report that he lives up to his name his existence is basically nothing more than just being a guinea pig for the beaker family they set up science experiments and then they use him to test these science experiments on and it's an odd setup because his relationship with cersei compared to his relationship with Loki is quite good which is a bit bizarre because her job she's kind of painted as the more evil one and as the one who enjoys like pain and suffering more where Loki is painted more as just this mad scientist who's got these insane ideas it seems to be Cersei who's the real driving force behind these test subjects and like making them evil and it's also very sad because Nervous's aspiration is family so he'll dream of getting married going on dates having kisses and everything like that but he obviously is only used as the test subject for the Beaker family so he doesn't actually get to experience any of these things because he's literally being held captive in his own house and he's also not that popular among strange town either which is quite bizarre because he does know his own man but only as an acquaintance not as a friend or anything like that and considering his own man lives in the same town as him genuinely up the road like i'm not even using that as a saying she genuinely lives up the road from him and he's also never even met his cousin who now lives with his mom it's entirely possible that his own mom doesn't even know that he's there and neither do the rest of the townspeople either but there are people in the town who do know that he's alive and they do know that he exists and that's a curious family this gets even more sad when we think about the strained relationship between the beaker and the the curious
serious family. So the only people that never subject has got to talk to are detested by the people that he lives with and also performs experiments on them. Um, Pascal Curious, the one who's pregnant with the alien Babby, is the only person that Nervous has actually got who he considers a friend and even then the relationship isn't that high. So essentially he's trapped in Strange Town with two parents and I'm going to use that term loosely because obviously if you're a parent don't conduct experiments on your child, you know what I mean? It's like parenting 101, pick up a book. So he's trapped with them and then he does have some familiarity with people within the town but also the people that he knows are completely hated by his parents and nobody else in the town is aware of his existence, even his own mum. He doesn't even know his own cousin, like he has these ties to family there. He's got nothing, his life is basically a test subject. He is included in The Sims 4 but it's an alternate timeline so I feel kind of weird like shutting it on here because The Sims 4 is basically like, oh, nothing. <laughs> sorry. And instead I'm going to move on to the PSP and I don't usually mention the PSP lore that often, mainly because I haven't played the game so I'm not really that well acquainted with the lore in the game but I am planning on doing a Sims 2 for PSP LP because it is packed with lore. So where is he? What's he doing in The Sims PSP? Has he managed to get away from this family I'm a ding dong? Is he thriving? Well, I'm actually really sorry to report to your hens, but oh my god, he fucking did. The story goes that he was so miserable in the Beaker household that he actually ended up getting killed by one of the machines. And what's even worse is that he had a girlfriend in this game, Annie Howell, but she doesn't even know that he's dead. She just thinks that he upped and left him. So it's a really harrowing death. And then following Nervous's death, the Beaker family ended up kidnapping a bin man to use as test subjects for the scientific experiments, which kind of shows that didn't really mean anything to them and they just used the adoption system to perform test subjects on him. And that's the tragic story of Nervous Subject and I don't want to say it but I gotta say it, The Sims 4 could never, honey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to The Sims team but Jesus Christ, lads, God bless this man, the stuff that he's been through. This story is so dark and twisted, not to sound like an absolute freak but I did find myself enjoying it. Really hope that we get to see some of this kind of law in The Sims 4, you know, saying that we love law, we need storylines, not all of us are creative, my imagination is shot, honey. So yes, I hope that we can get more law in the future and also this is the first video of the entire history of that I've done in a very long while and this series means a lot to me so sorry if I've been kind of nervous throughout all of it I'm just kind of getting back into the swing of doing this but yeah that's everything that I have for you today I'll link the series on the end card as well so you can go through and watch others if you would like to and I'm excited to bring the series back so yeah please subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment let me know what other families you want me to do as well and it doesn't have to be families either it can be things like I've done death I've done pregnancy I've done wahoo and um, so yeah just leave me ideas and I'll see you in the next one bye, 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 bye bitch sorry I keep doing it really aggressive bye, 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 bye guys